Hey YouTube, I'm Nick from Nick282K and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about rotary encoders. A rotary encoder is used to determine the position and speed of a rotating device. Uh, for example, there's a rotary encoder in the wheel of a mouse or uh, on mice that still had the little ball in them to determine the position of the mouse on your table. Another place you run into rotary encoders is in your car. There's a rotary encoder that just gives the speed of the engine. This gives you your tack output. There's also a rotary encoder in the volume knob of the stereo. There's a rotary encoder that has to determine both the speed you're spinning it and the direction in order to adjust the volume electronically. In order to better illustrate how a rotary encoder works, I've built one. This first example, I'm only using one contact point on this wheel. The wheel is made of metal and half of it is masked with plastic. So when the wire, that contact point, touches the metal, it will show on the oscilloscope. When it's touching the masked off area that has tape on it, it will show as zero volts. As the disc spins, this will show as a series of pulses on the oscilloscope. You can use the length of the pulses or the frequency in between each rising edge to determine how fast this disc is rotating. This gives you a pretty good measurement of the speed but it doesn't give you any indication of the direction of rotation. Whether the drill is rotating forwards or backwards the pulses will always look the same. I've placed a second contact point 90 degrees of rotation ahead of the first one. This means that as the edge between the metal and the plastic goes past these two points, it will always reach one before it reaches the other one. I've put this second contact point as the lower trace on the oscilloscope. I'm going to run the encoder and then you'll be able to see the difference in the two waveforms from one contact point to the next. It's not apparent at slow speeds, but as the drill goes faster and faster, you'll see the trace at the bottom leads the trace at the top. That's because the contact point for the bottom trace is rotationally 90 degrees ahead from the contact point at the top. So as it transitions from 0 volts to 5 volts, or from 5 back down to 0, it will always transition first on the lower trace and then on the top one. If I reverse the direction of the drill, the reverse is true. The top trace now leads the bottom trace because it is rotationally 90 degrees ahead. This gives you a way to determine both the speed and the direction of the rotation of an encoder. My rotary encoder had very poor signal quality and very poor resolution because I was only using two sectors and sliding electrical contacts. You can improve the quality of an encoder by adding more sectors and using optical uh, sensing. So you'd make a, a number of smaller sections and then put two uh, photo eyes looking at each section. If you color half of them dark and half of them light, you'll see the transition from light and dark from your two photo sensors. The only stipulation is every time you make your section smaller, you have to put the two sensors 90 degrees apart from each other. That's uh, half the length of any one of the dark or light sections. They don't have to be looking at the same section, but overall they have to be 90 degrees apart in order to get the proper phase shift in the two signals. You can also use this to make a linear encoder using exactly the same method. You split up a long bar into a number of dark and light sections and put your two signals, uh, whether they be mechanical or optical, 90 degrees apart, so half the width of one of the light or dark spaces. As the bar moves back and forth underneath your two sensors, you'll see exactly the same signal as you saw with the rotary encoder. I hope you liked this video and I hope you found it informative. If you'd like to see more videos like this, check out my channel. Thanks for watching.